Zabarius Chapter 1 The Origin is a two to four player board game where you're going to be playing as one of four factions, the orcs or humans, as well as stuff like the undead, and you're basically trying to conquer an entire continent. Every player is going to get their own unique portion of the board, they're going to be able to rotate it and put it how they would like, and then connect it with every other player playing, meaning the game gets larger as more players join. Additionally, you're going to be acquiring resources, gathering new castles, and building stronger units to defeat your opponents. This game plays like an online uh, RTS game similar to StarCraft and WarCraft, simulating the fight between the different races attempting to defeat each other. As you go throughout the game, if you can defeat an opponent completely by removing their castles and towns and buildings, that will remove them from the game up until the point where you remove the last player and are craned crown champion of Zabarius, controller of all of the realm. The game takes about 40 minutes to play and is probably for ages 12 and up. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you how to play the game. I'll explain around or so and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So here is Zabarius Chapter 1 The Origin and everything included for up to four players to play. Now here I went ahead and set it up for two players and I show you I have extra boards here but uh, I will kind of give you the rundown for all the players so you can see how the board is set up periodically depending on the number of players you are playing. In the game you're going to be getting four boards which will combine into a large map. Each board is going to have a specific race attached to it so for instance this blue one here is the humans and the human player is going to get the specific board. The other three or three, uh, three classes, whether it be the orcs or whether it be the undead, uh, so on and so forth. And you're just going to go ahead and make a four by a two by two, which is basically all four boards when playing a four player game. Uh, additionally, every single player is just going to take one of their bags of stuff and that is what they're going to have as far as components. The game comes with enough bags for each player to have one specific bag. Uh, the players will include getting five die of their color, a full set of, mini of, of unique tokens, which are basically creatures, which will have a cost on one side and their stats on the other. And there's three different types, whether they be wood, whether they be silver, or whether they be gold. Additionally, each player is going to get these little stand tokens here, which are basically for uh, control over towers. You're going Going to start with one on your board the farthest away so if we want to play a two-player game if I put one each of the uh, of these three little areas here you can put on the farthest castle away and every board is going to have three castles and or towns attached to it additionally every single player is going to start with 370 gold which is what you're going to utilize to build additional towns as well as units once everybody has their characters all set up so that you can see what their value is as well as their gold and of course the stand so they can place new different fortifications on the new territories they own you're pretty much ready to go you're additionally going to get a nice letter from the designers of the game explaining it a little better as well as giving you some background and then of course the rule book and the box for the game and that's pretty much what is going to come in the game now playing a four player game you're going to have these four boards here and you can actually go ahead and rotate them however you would like by placing them down and it, all the roads will connect regardless of how you place it. On the boards themselves, there are certain locations you need to look out for. One of them is going to be a space like this one, which is basically a large mountain giving you a, you and your units additional range when they stand on there. There's power positions, which have these little crystals on them, which will give all your units additional static attack. There are the three specific areas on, the, on your board that are basically play, places you can control that will give you additional income every round and additionally there are roads and rivers roads will let you travel on them and also they will account for doing damage in a ranged fashion and as well as movement so you can move diagonally and shoot diagonally uh, to better get a good, better range when using the roads and then you have the water and water is something that you normally cannot cross unless your unit specifies otherwise but otherwise every single board is going to have these same things on it so that 
everybody has a balanced, uh, uh, balanced way of winning. When you're playing the four players, it's like this. When you're playing three players, you're gonna simply move it just like this. And when you're playing two players, you can include a neutral board, whether it be here or in the middle, or you can simply take that board away and just play like this, in which case you're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one fight and the battle lines are drawn right through the middle here. Each unit now has their 50 wood banner on the farthest area away. They've got their 370 gold and they've got everything pretty much ready to go. This is the setup for the game and all the components. Let's go ahead and take you down below. I will show you a round of play in which these players are going to go back and forth. I'll show you how combat works and how movement works and how gaining certain territories works. And then we'll come up and I will give you my review of the game, Zabarius, The Origin, Chapter 1. So I went ahead and set up a two-player game of Zabarius, and as you can see, you've got the character over here, who is the yellow character, and these guys are the orcs. And then over here, we're playing with the red characters, and these guys, what are these guys here? You can go ahead and look at the back, and it tells you these are the undead. They went ahead and decided how they wanted to set their boards up by rotating them, place their little bases on the farthest end castles here, which will start with these little 50 wood banners, but eventually you can grow them. Them, and then they went ahead and placed all their components here with the money over here. They've got their starting currency and they're ready to go. Remember in this game, you were only limited uh, you're, you're limited by all of your components here except for bases so you can obviously get more territories You'll just have to take them from your opponents when you do as well as die if you end up having to roll 50 die You'll actually roll this ten times, but otherwise this is what you get in the game Okay, so we'll go ahead and start with the undead player here He's gonna go first and then after he takes his turn It will be this player's turn then the income phase will happen and then it will go once again back to the red player And it will continue there until somebody has been defeated to begin Again, he's got his currency here and then all of his units on one side is the cost of the units and on the other side is going to be its stats if we look at a unit specifically like this one here it's going to have the front and the back which is it's a skull dragon that's the title of it it's got 220 gold worth of uh, cost in order to bring it out and then it trans it transmits a bonus of two basic strength to all units and can pass over um, water and enemy units. So the a character like this can actually move over water as well as going over enemy units because it basically has flying. On this side, it shows you the image of the character or the monster and additionally it has its strength. Its strength is going to have a base number, something like 10 here, and then it's going to have a plus die. And in this case, it is a 10 flat with four die. So when it attacks, it will actually roll four die. And then after it rolls four die, it will add that value up, which in this case is four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus 10, which would make it 23. 23 would then go against another character and basically whoever has the highest would win. Down here it shows you its range, which is how far it can hit. Anything with a range of one is a melee and anything with a range of two or more is going to be a ranged attack. Additionally, the last thing you need to know is they have speed and speed is how far they can travel. So if I was able to, which I'm not, place this dragon here after spending 250 or 220, I could then move it based on its speed. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Now you can only move diagonally when you come across roads and you can only attack diagonally when there are roads as well available. So if I wanted to go here or here, for instance, I'd have to go one and then two. So you're always trying to look for the best route. If there was no road here, he would simply have to go one, two, and then three. So that is basically how the units work and a little overview of them. These are your wooden banners. They'll provide you with 50 gold every beginning of every round. They also have a defense of one die value. So when somebody tries to attack a specific area which has a one of these wooden banners, you'll have to defend with one die. You can always upgrade banners on your turn, and the cost to upgrade them is shown on the banners that are um, basically corresponding. So from 50 to 100 gold, and then 100 gold to 150. And basically the, the banners will give you additional die value for defense, as well as additional currency during the next round, provided you still have that specific banner. Uh, the last thing you need to know that is a basic ruling is in order to build units, you're going to need to build them based on the banner. A wooden banner can only build wooden units. A silver banner can build these silver units and they can build wooden. And the gold banners can build any of the units. 
And the last thing is each of these tells you how many units can be on top of them. So in, for instance, the silver banner can have two units on top of it. The wooden can have only one and the gold can have three units on top of it. All right, so let's go ahead and begin a turn now that we've gotten all that out of the way. First, we will go ahead and play with this character here and he's gonna to wanna to build one of these wooden units and he has three options. He can go ahead and build one of these skeletons here. He can build one of these little, uh, what, what are these guys called? <laughs> these are called acid spitters. And then the other one here is a crow, a giant crow. Crows can pass over enemy units in water. It's pretty useful, but they cost 90. Let's go ahead and just build a crow and a skeleton. So we have this crow and the skeleton we want to build. It's going to cost us 60 for a skeleton. So we'll spend the 50 and the 10, and that will let us build the skeleton. Now, remember, we can't build the, uh, the crow just yet because we only are allowed to have one unit underneath this banner. So we can take actions on units that have been played down. So for instance, this skeleton has a range of one and can move three spaces. So he will go one, two, and three. And after that, now I can go ahead and build another unit. So for instance, I can go ahead and build this giant crow, which is gonna cost me 90. So I'll spend 100 and I'll get 10 back. Once I've built this unit here, I'm now able to use him as well. When you use the units, they are simply able to A, do a movement, and then B, do an attack action. Each unit can only do one attack and only do one movement. And even if you combine attacks between characters, if you attack these two with against one character, they would have both used up their attacks. So that is how that functions. All right, this guy has a range of, oh, I believe this is five. That's really powerful. That's great. So he's going to go ahead and go one, two and three and four. And then when he gets here, he gets to take a free banner. Every wooden banner is free, but to upgrade it costs more. So he'll take this free wooden banner here. He'll place it just like that, like he has with this one here. Uh, and then his last action, I think, is going to be to spend a hundred and he'll upgrade this one to a silver, which lets him build silver units. Uh, and we'll go ahead and spend the other hundred, which will allow us to remove this banner here and go ahead and place another silver, which is good because now we have 200 gold coming to us next round. He only has 10 currency left, so he can't really build anything more. So we'll then go to this player over here. And then of course this player is going to do the same thing. He'll go ahead and spend 60 and he's gonna go ahead and take one of these guys here, these little orc dudes, has a range of three and a melee of one. All of the units, if you look at them, they correspond with each other, have the same stats. The only difference between them is going to be their passive and active skills they have on the back. Some of them that let you uh, cross over certain terrain or do certain damage, that kind of stuff. Some of them even let you rotate the board. A uh, one, two, and a three. He'll go ahead and play this guy for 80. And he gets 20 back. And this guy is just a big dude. He has three range and he can move for three. So one, two, and then three. And then he's still got a hundred. He'll spend that. He'll go ahead and upgrade this, giving him the silver. And now he will spend a hundred and twenty. And he can go ahead and build this guy here for 120. He's gonna build this guy, has a range of one and a speed of four. But what's interesting about this guy here is it says it sells it, it, it sells off defeated units for half price. Basically, you collect units value up to half for every unit that this guy defeats place this guy here he's got a speed of four so he's gonna go ahead and go one two three and four and then he'll get another banner here and then we will just continue that's the basic idea of the game though as far as moving around with the units gathering new forts upgrading the forts those are pretty much all the things you can do on your turn but it comes down to combinations now so let's go ahead and just move it to an attack to show you how attacking basically functions so uh, let's go ahead and use this crow here. He can go one, two, three, four, and five. He still only, he only has a range of one, so he's not going to get to this guy here, unfortunately. So maybe next round we'll do that. Um, but remember, before we do even even before actually we move this guy here, I think a more important aspect is collecting uh, the currency at the beginning of your turn. So at the beginning of your turn, you collect currency based on the flags you have out. So he's got two hundred, so he gets two hundred, and then he can go ahead and move his five. One, two, three four and five. Okay, now we can go ahead and spend more currency. Maybe he'll spend 200, get 50 back, and that will get him the 150 flag over here. Doesn't let him get as many units, but he's going to get more currency next round. Uh, he's got 70 left, so he will, he'll save this. He'll save the currency, I think, and he's done. He can, he can move over here. He wants to defend this area, but now it goes back to this player's turn here. He's going to get 150, 
and now he can go ahead and go. And in this case, he's got a ranged unit, which is pretty interesting. So let me show you what else he can do. He's going to go ahead and spend 160, and that will get him this guy here. This guy has a speed of 6, but he has a range of 1. I'm just going to place it here. And he's going to go 1, 2, 3, hmm, 4, 5, 6... He's not going to make it. Dang it. But this guy, this guy will. He's got a range of three, so he actually gets one, two, and he can hit him. And how it works is this way. If this guy can't reach him, then the attack from this guy will not do damage to him, even if he loses the attack. But in this case, he if he does beat him, he will actually defeat him, and, and this guy will be removed. But you can still roll for defense, and he's got two plus one. That's going to be eight. Plus one is nine. And then this guy here has four, four plus one which is four plus uh, two is six. So in this case, nine beats the six, in which case neither unit will die because he can't reach him, but he's able to d block the attack, basically. Uh, we can go ahead and continue. This guy's got a speed of four, one, two, and three. And now he can go ahead and attack him too. This is six plus three, and he's still got his two plus one. Ooh, six, 10, 11, 12, plus six is 18, three, that's going to defeat this guy. And when this guy perishes, <laughs> this guy is able to take half the value of this guy. Uh, and in this case, he'd get 45. So he's going to end up getting 40, I believe. It might be rounded down or rounded up. I'm not too sure. But that's a good way for this guy to collect some money. Now, unfortunately for uh, this guy here is he can't actually make it in here to secure this area because he moved and attacked. And he wouldn't have been able to get that guy if he didn't stand here because of the range. And then that is pretty much going to be the it for this player's turn. He's only got 40, and he's moved all of his units other than this guy, which he'll go ahead and move into here. All right, and then going back to this guy here, and it's going to just continue. He's going to get his 250 gold, and hopefully now he's going to be able to build something really big, like, for instance, this big dragon here I showed you previously. It's going to cost him 220 gold to do so, and he's got his speed of 4, so he's going to go ahead and go 1. Oops two, three, and four, which is going to claim him yet another territory. And additionally, this guy is going to make all of his units get plus two in combat. Fairly useful. He's got another hundred gold left, so he'll spend that and he'll also upgrade this building here, putting this to a uh, hundred from 50. There you go, just like that. And now he's going to get 350 gold, whereas this guy's only getting 150, but he's got a lot more units out and he's ready to attack. Um, that's, that's it. That's the basic idea of the game. The last thing I need to really show you, I suppose, is coming into attack. So I'll go ahead and show you basically him going here and also show you that if this guy was over here, how it works. So in this case, he's got a two die defense defending this area here. He's also got a character defending the area, which is another two die plus five. So he's got four die plus five. He's also got two from this. So he's got four die plus seven, four die plus seven. Whoop is going to be 7, 8, 9, 10, and 19. It's totaling 19. And then this guy here has got 5 plus 4. All right, that's 11, 15, 18, 20, plus 2 is 22. And because this guy has a more a higher amount of damage, this would actually get completely removed, passes away. So does the character as well. And this area is now open for the taking. The only way you would actually take an area is if you were on top of it to take control of it. You can be on top of it regardless of whether it has a banner or not. But if you defeat it while being at one or more range, it just simply will remove that currency from the player that specifically owns it. And that's it. Once somebody loses all of their banners and has no more areas left, even if they have units, the game is over and the player who defeated them is victorious, last player standing. All right, let's come up and talk about it. Zabarius, let's go ahead and talk about this RTS board game because that is what it is in a sense. You're playing an RTS on a board game. You are controlling a specific race. You're building units. You're building buildings. You're taking over other people's areas and you're trying to eliminate them. That means that this player, this game has player elimination and there is a variant in the game in which you can play where the first player gets eliminated, everybody then just adds up their value and whoever has the most is the winner if you don't like playing games that have elimination. However, this game's rather quick. 
once you get through the first one or two games, you're going to understand how to play the game, and they go rather, they, they move, move rather speedily, so usually takes about 40 minutes to maybe about an hour and 10 minutes, depending on the number of players. With more players comes a lengthier game, especially with elimination, depending on how good players are and if they want to turtle or not. Speaking of turtling, that's another aspect in this game. Like most RTSs, if you're playing a three-player game and two people decide to team up on you, it's going to be rather challenging to defend yourself, which plays a lot uh, into the social aspect of the game. In one case, though, maybe they're just out to get you because you're overly powerful, and then you might just be in trouble. That happens in pretty much any RTS. There's always going to be that potential problem, and so, you know, that would, I guess, be a potential negative to the game. But if you're an RTS player and you've played StarCraft and WarCraft, you understand that dilemma, and there are ways of working yourself out of those problems that you may or may not have. The game has a lot of strategies, specifically because you can choose how you orientate the board, which of the classes you play, there will be additional classes later on, and then the whole fact that you can kind of mutually conjoin attacks, and if you're smart, you can use your range against melee, which will prevent them from removing your characters. Building your base is the most important thing, because currency is what matters in this game. The more currency you have, the more units you can build, the more units that you have, the more likely you're going to win the game. Players are going to try and stop you from doing that. The boards are also symmetrical, which is nice, but still provide a different way of playing the game based on how you set it up, which is an interesting aspect as well. The component quality is excellent. All the pieces are nice and thick, will be usable for many, many, many games without having any issues whatsoever. The fact that all the components are standardized to once you've used them, they're out, except for the bases make sense, as well as the die, you're never going to really have a problem, other than I would say maybe sometimes you're going to be rolling 15 die or so, in which case you'll need to borrow some other people's die, or just simply roll them and add them up. The math in this game is not complex at all. If you know to how to do basic uh, addition and subtraction, you'll be just fine, but there is a little bit of mechanical portions of the game where you need to go, okay, I get plus two for this, I get plus two for this dude, and he's also on a range area, so that means he gets plus one. And so there's that that thinking process, but for you RTS players, no big deal whatsoever. For maybe new gamers, it might be a little bit complex, but you'll get it rather quickly. The characters are rather different and unique as far as their abilities go. For instance, there's a character that is in this guy here. This is the Rhino Rider. He can trample over silver and wooden units regardless of how powerful they are. He just simply walks over them, but he's slow. And in combination with another character, he'll get double movement. So as long as you can keep both of them on the board, he can start running over a bunch of scary characters because silver characters are very dangerous as well. The Undead has something like a vampire. When the vampire eats you, he gains your strength. So he adds all your bonuses to himself, making him incredibly powerful. My vampire at one point for one of the games I played had like a plus 20 attack and 10 die or something nuts like that and he was almost unstoppable up until the point where he got ran over by a rhino in which case he was stompable if you know what I mean. Overall, Zabarius is a fun RTS style board game. If you like those style games, you're going to enjoy this one. If you like a st extremely competitive game with not a whole complex idea of how to play the game, there's very, very few simple things that you need to know how to do. Building units, moving the units, and adding. That's pretty much it, and if you can do that, you'll be just fine. I really, really enjoyed this game, and for what it, it's trying to set out to do, it does an excellent job. As a game, straight down the middle for me, enjoy it, and for what it's doing when I want to play an RTS or as a board game, this is going to be one I'm going to run to because it does it exactly as I would imagine it playing StarCraft, but with my friends on a tabletop, being able to communicate and uh, have some fun with a little bit of banter as well. I enjoyed this game. You can watch it live as well on my live stream a couple weeks ago we did play it live so you can see for yourself if you're not convinced already go ahead and take a look down below who in the description and you can go ahead and pick up the game if if you want thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment hit that notification bell button it would really greatly appreciate it it would i would the game would i don't know go ahead and take a look at that as well as take a look at our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we're giving away the game joust for fun right now on our website if you're interested in picking it up you can go ahead and attempt to win it first and then go ahead and buy it if you can also go ahead and check out our live streams every wednesday 7 30 p.m pst on facebook down below in the description is where our facebook pages go ahead and give it a gander see if you like it we give away a ton of games there have a great community of about i don't know uh, 50 to a thousand people. I, I don't really know how Facebook does its analytics, but you can join and become part of the unfiltered gamer team squad group of people.
people. You'll, it, it, it's fun. You'll enjoy it. As well as, don't forget to take a look at Zabarius. If you like RTSs and you want on a board game, this is going to be the one for you. I got signed by the designer. Oh, so cool. All right, guys. That's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to playing StarCraft and WarCraft on a board game because they haven't made any dang new Star War, StarCraft or WarCraft, RTSs, or even Command & Conquer. Where's that new Command & Conquer game coming out? I swear, I've been waiting for the Command & Conquer game to come out, that uh, revision, revitalized. It's not coming out. So go ahead and play Zabarius instead. <laughs>